This is some data from a beach in Wales, in Porth Crawl. What the biologist was trying to figure out is, is there a difference in size between the periwinkles you find in the lower shore region and the midshore region? So those are going to be defined regions based on tides. I don't exactly know why they're worried about the size of periwinkles at this particular place and why there should be a difference between lower shore and midshore. It might be something to do with where the adults are and where the baby periwinkles are. I don't know. But maybe they're just worried about sea conditions impacting the periwinkles at different shore ranges. They collected the data. And what they should have done to start with is analyze descriptive statistics and do explore. Uh, we'll put in. The dependent variable is their length of so the periwinkles uh, zone is the factor. You can divide them into two separate groups uh, based on lower shore and mid shore. I'm going to do a normality plot with tests. I do OK. <laughs> that is most definitely not normally distributed data. Uh, when you get a residual plot like that from your, it's not so bad for lower shore, but mid shore is a mess. A bit weird that is. Where's the Kolmogorov's man off? Mm. Yes, it's less than 0 0.05 and Shapiro will catch Lee. Kamal Grossmanoff isn't uh, for both of them, and particularly Midshore is not normally distributed. Um, I made a bit of a mistake there, which I'm now going to go and do with a. Just for my sake of interest, I'm going to do the histograms the two different zones. Yeah, OK. So the lower shore. Doesn't look normally distributed to me. Because it's not symmetrical, there's no down on the other side of it. There's no lower frequency at the very small lengths. They just tend to be this looks more like an exponential. <clears throat> the mid shore strangely looks much more like a normal distribution except it's got some extreme values and outliers anyway the reason why we're doing non-parametric tests on this set of data is because it's assumed to be non-normally distributed if you have normally distributed data you would do a parametric test and you do something called a t-test which is what we're going to do next week this time you're going to do a non-parametric test, which is about the medians of the two groups. So if I look at the median of the lower shore, it's 5.5. If I look at the median of the mid shore, it's 6.3. Are those two medians significantly different to one another? If I do a hypothesis test. So if I go to analyze non-parametric tests, this time, for sure, I have two independent samples. So I'm back to my wizard. I've got to run. I've got to pick my fields. So my test field is length. My grouping variable is zone. I can go to settings so I can automatically choose the test, which is where you want to be if you're a novice. If I was to pick on customized tests, I'm expecting it to do a man with me or you test. Uh, they're used interchangeably as names. They actually have a different way of calculating the test statistic between a man with me and a you test, but we'll not worry about that so much. I'm not expecting it to do Kreskow Wallace, which is requires three groups. I'm not expecting it to do Conwell Grossmanoff or Wolf Volkovitz or 
I have no idea what on earth a John Care Terpstra test is. So I'm expecting it to come back with Man Whitney, but I'll let it automatically do it. Ah, oh, there's also a median test, right? So I press run. So off it goes, it says, the distribution of length is the same in, in millimeters, is the same between the two zones. That is the null hypothesis. It is carried out an independent samples man written EU test, which is what I hoped it was going to do. The significance is 0.264, which is definitely not below 0.05. So I retain the null hypothesis. There is no difference in the lengths of periwinkles between midshore and lower shore. And it's done exactly the same uh, comparison using the histogram side by side as I've done already uh, to show that this is true. They completely overlap with one another. Now, this is <clears throat> where there's a bit of complication with the new output of SPSS. It never used to do this. It's done it in the most recent versions. So it calculates this Man Whitney U test, st test statistic, which is 106.5. It also calculates a variant of it called the Wilcoxon W. These two are related to each other. Explaining it is just not hugely worth it. The test statistic it is used is 106.5, which happens to be the Man Whitney U one and the one that I want you to report if I ask you what the test statistic is. It's then got a standard error, standardized test statistic, don't care about those. And then it's got two values for the significance. It's got an asymptotic one and an exact significance. Now, if you go up here, and look at the significance it's reported in the hypothesis test summary, it has reported the exact significance on the two-sided test. So that is the value of the significance that I want, the exact one, not the asymptotic one. Why they went to confuse people by putting extra ones in, I have no idea, but they did and they just made my life harder. They also reversed the way this is calculated. So when you do this, you get a t your test statistic is dependent on each of the two different groups. What you used to do is pick the test statistic as the biggest number and I think no, the smallest number, and they've changed it to the biggest number. Anyway, they just moved it around. So suddenly my tests were all broken. All of the values that I thought students should be getting from this calculation turned out to be exactly the opposite of what they were. So two years ago, it was a total and utter nightmare. Trying to get what I'd calculated to agree with what SPSS was giving as the output. Now it works. You might use one of these during your final year project. In general, unless you have very solid evidence to suggest it's not normally distributed, I would suggest using the normally distributed tests. There's no particular reason why you should use a non-parametric test to compare the means between two groups where you've got a small number of measured values. 